What's up guys, my name is Brandon and Apple just released the first developer beta of iOS 14 and man is it a great update. So today in this video we're going to be going hands on with the all new home screen, the new widgets and the incoming call UI, some of my favorite features so far in iOS 14. So if you're excited for this video I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and jump right into iOS 14 beta 1 and some of the big new features that we saw with this update. So starting off with the home screen itself, you're gonna notice that right once you 3D press on any of these icons and press edit home screen, you will see a brand new option up in the top left. It is a little plus icon and that is for the new home screen widget. So yes, this was rumored for a while, but we didn't know if it was actually going to come. And now we see that we actually have home screen widgets in iOS 14. So from here you get tons of options for widgets to add to the home screen. So the first one is the smart stack, which is pretty interesting. We're gonna go ahead and add that right here. And you can see what it says. It says automatically rotates widgets to show the most relevant information throughout the day and can also be flipped through easily. So basically this is just going to use machine learning to see what you use throughout the day and at certain times during the day and change throughout the day to show the most relevant information for you. And you can see here, you get two different sized options to add to the home screen. So either a little square, which looks like an Apple watch face, or you get a little long rectangle right here that you can add to the home screen as well. So we'll just add this one right here and you can see it automatically pops up right there at the top of the screen. You could also move it if you want to be like in the middle if you want, in between rows or all the way at the bottom. You could do it just like so, which is really cool. If you go ahead and swipe, you can see it shows right now. It thinks I wanna see, you know, like the calendar. We have our top stories from Apple News. We have whatever this is right here. We have notes, we have reminders, series suggestions, things like that. So it's really cool. And if you tap and hold on this right here, you can also edit it. You can remove photos. So if you didn't like that it showed photos right there, you can go ahead and remove that and then it will show all these right here. But when you go here to edit stack, you can see you can actually customize which ones it shows in which order as well. And of course you can't have smart rotate there as well. If you wanted to, like I said, use machine learning and show the ones that it thinks are gonna be most relevant to you at that specific time. So taking a look at some of the other options for widgets, if you go ahead and tap and hold on the home screen then press the plus again, you can see we have all of these different options for widgets here. We have batteries, calendar, maps, music, news, uh, tips, stocks, all kinds of things right here. Screen time. I think one that's gonna be pretty popular is going to be batteries. And you can see here, you get three different options for sizes for the batteries. This one looks like how it looked in the widget section in iOS 13. This is gonna be my favorite one right here because it'll show different devices and their batteries right there in those circles. So we go ahead and add that right there. You can see it shows that. But if I go ahead and open up my AirPods, you'll see it's gonna show the AirPods battery as well. It shows not only the case, but also each individual AirPod and also my iPhone's battery as well. And that will show you know other devices that you have connected as well, which is super convenient to have on the home screen. And once again, if you wanna move this around, you can. So you can move it around to the bottom, the middle, you can move it around to wherever you want. Actually the bottom, you can't move it to the bottom if you don't have a lot of applications on that home screen. So like since I don't have so many apps, I can't move it to the bottom. It just goes to the bottom of those applications. And as for stacking, you can stack widgets as well. So if you go over to this page right here, you can see we have multiple widgets stacked right there. We could probably even add another one up in the top right here. So we'll do another little small one. Let's just say we wanna do I don't know, let's say we want to do another podcast one right here. Tap that and you can see we have two podcasts right there. Click done. And now we essentially have a page just full of widgets, which is pretty cool. And of course, if you click on the widget, it will open up that application very, very quickly, just like so. You can actually click these individual albums as well. It doesn't all just lead to one section. You can click on like an individual album and it will open up to that specific album, which is really cool. Now I wish you could change the size, but you cannot change the size. You have to actually remove the full widget and then add another one if you want it to be like a smaller size of that widget. So like for instance, for music, if I wanted to add, like maybe I want it to be this one instead of the huge one, I'd have to delete it and then re-add this one, which is kind of a pain. Hopefully Apple fixes that, but you can see there, that's what the smaller music looks like right there, which looks really cool. I really love the look and what Apple did with widgets. It's implemented a lot better than I thought it would be. Now, if we keep scrolling all the way to the very end, you'll see we get to this page right here, which is going to be the app library. And you can see we actually have folders right here. These are actually done automatically. So Apple did this automatically. You have utility, social suggestions, recently added, and you cannot customize these. These are just made by Apple themselves. It's basically just curated based on the applications themselves and what they are. So that's pretty cool. Now, also if you swipe down or if you tap on app library right there, you will see you actually get to search your apps in alphabetical order. So you can see them over here on the right-hand side. You can go to whatever letter you want there, or you can just tap here to search for whatever application you want. And you can see it pops up right there, which is very convenient. Of course, you can use spot, uh, Spotlight Search as well, 
but this is just another view to get to those applications, which is pretty nice. Now, speaking of the home page, there are some other features as well. And by the way, you can see when you delete a widget, the applications come back in, which is really nice. But basically, if you go ahead and 3D press right here on the home screen, you'll notice at the bottom here, we have this little gradient around the pages right here. When you go through the pages, and if you 3D press on that, you can go through your pages very quickly, kind of like the what you do on Safari when you scroll down a web page really fast. Use that same little haptic press there on that, and you can go through these applications very quickly, or these pages rather, very quickly. Now, one thing that Apple did not talk about, which I think is really cool, is the ability to hide pages. So you can actually do that in iOS now. So if all you have to do is press and hold anywhere blank like this, and then tap on these little dots that I just talked about, tap on those, and now you get this right here, edit pages. And from here, you can actually hide all the pages. So if you only wanted one page, unfortunately you cannot hide all of them, or maybe not, unfortunately that would be really weird, but you can hide all these pages. Click done, and look at that. You only have one page right here and there's no way to get to it unless you just went back into that mode and enable those pages again, which is pretty, pretty neat. And to add them back, just go ahead and press and hold on the home screen, tap on this, and then go and check these off so that they all show up now on your springboard. And there you go, you have all those pages right back. Now also, if we swipe over to the right from the home screen or from the lock screen, you will get this today view, which is where the widgets used to be. And these are still widgets now, but they're just different looking widgets. And you can see it looks a lot better than it did in iOS 13, at least in my opinion. So we have the screen time right there. We have our weather. We have all these different things right here. And it looks really good right here. Now you can also edit this as well. Just tap and hold on one of these and you will see the edit button down at the bottom. Let's go ahead and edit home screen and you will see edit right there. And this is where you can go ahead and add in widgets, third party widgets if you want to. And of course at the top you do also get your spotlight search right there, which does look a little bit different than it did in iOS 13. Now of course we do have some new settings for all these new home screen changes as well. So if we go to the settings right here and go to home screen, you can see we have new app downloads, add to home screen or app library only. So you can change that right there. I like having mine in the home screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to the home screen. But if you only wanted it to show up in the app library, you can do that. So basically it won't be a new icon on your screen. It will only be in the library, which is this right here. So again, a very similar feature to what Android has. Now, another great feature we get in iOS 14 is picture in picture, finally. So this works for videos, as long as it's not YouTube videos, like Safari videos or Netflix or something like that, you can actually watch picture in picture video. It also works for FaceTime calls. So if you're on a FaceTime video call, when you go to the home screen and go in other applications, it'll no longer pause the FaceTime call. You will be able to continue FaceTiming in picture in picture, which I tested it out and it's really, really awesome. So you can see you can drag around the picture in picture itself as well to any four corners on the iPhone screen, which looks really great. And it gives you a lot of versatility with FaceTime. So now let's test out picture in picture with a video. So I have a video pulled up in Safari right here. If you go ahead and play this on YouTube, go into full screen and then go out to the home screen. You can see there we have the video playing and we can put it in any of the four corners. We, we can also put it off the screen like this and it's over there. You just tap on that. You see the little animation right there, which is pretty cool. If you want it to be in full screen, of course, just go ahead and tap on that and it puts it back in full screen. And it's just like the jailbreak tweaks in the past. Apple literally just stole this from the jailbreak tweaks. But of course, this has been on Android forever as well. So it was definitely due to come to iOS at some point. And I'm really glad that it's finally here with iOS 14. And one other feature I wanted to quickly show you about picture in picture, if we go into our settings, general picture in picture, you do also have this option here for starting picture in picture automatically. It says when you swipe up to go home or use other apps, Videos and FaceTime calls will automatically continue in picture in picture. So that is a setting there that you may want to configure. We also got a nice new update to the control center in iOS 14. So if we go ahead and swipe down on the control center, you can see we have some new little widget looking icons here in the control center. And this is for home. And you can see we have the home pod right here. So this is really cool. This is all you can add for the time being. You can see we have the other little control center toggles down here. So if we go into our settings and then go to control center right here, you can see we have the option there for show home controls and you can read there it says include recommended controls for home accessories and scenes when your iphone is at home so that's an interesting new feature added there if you take that off you can see the control center looks pretty much like it did in ios 13 but i just wanted to mention that brief little update there that small little update to the control center here in ios 14 and you can see we have a couple of new control center toggles we can add here like sleep mode and i think sound recognition is a new one and things like that so that is what's new here in the control center in in iOS 14. And now finally, let's take a look at the new incoming call UI in iOS 14. So let's go ahead and do a phone call here. 
and take a look at this. So we now finally have an incoming call UI that does not take up the entire screen. You can also do that little gesture there to bring it into full screen and then swipe up again. And you can see here, it goes up in the top left. You see the little phone icon, tap that, it goes to full screen again. But while that's ringing, you can go into all the applications you want while it's ringing. That way the person on the other end doesn't know that you just, you know, we're ignoring them. So finally, that is a feature in iOS 14. I am super happy with that. It works for phone calls, FaceTime calls, all that good stuff. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is a hands-on look at the new home screen and widgets in iOS 14. Of course, I will have a lot more in-depth videos coming on iOS 14. I just want to get this one out there quickly so you guys can see some of the headlining features in the software updates. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. Of course, make sure you guys do subscribe for a lot more iOS 14 watch os 7 mac os 11 tons of new videos on the new software that was just announced today coming very very soon but anyways guys thanks again for watching this video and special shout out to everybody who was in the live stream earlier today it's about a six hour live stream super super fun times but anyways guys thanks again for watching i'll see you soon